you know, th this solution for Passbook is fantastic. You know, it, it gives us access to over 150 million users that have these devices in there for Passbook um, in the North America alone. Now, the only thing that we're missing is the other large market of smartphones, which is Androids. However, this solution has just rolled out for Androids as well. So we now have access to the two largest markets for smartphones with this loyalty solution for mobile wallets. This was a fantastic solution. You know, Apple users are considered among the, mo you know, the most loyal users there are out there. So it was natural for this mobile wallet, Passbook, to be uh, introduced to the mobile marketplace. Now, the only thing that was missing was the other half of the largest market for smartphones, which is your Androids. So we, we have just rolled out this solution for Androids as well. Um, it's a seamless process. The end user, you know, being our target audience, has uh, no idea that it's, it's for Apple or Android, it's a seamless transition for them, um, but it was necessary for our brands to be able to access both marketplaces. We've got the helipad right over here. And a class trip. <laughs> it's important to also point out that, you know, Passbook, being that it is a mobile wallet, it was put there by Apple cannot be deleted by the end user, um, which becomes very important. You know, although, although the end user can delete a pass that's, that's specific to a brand, Passbook functionality will always be there. And as long as the brand pass that we create is put within Passbook, the consumer will be able to communicate and receive notifications and alerts specific to that brand that they were interested in the first place. I think the one other thing that is important to point out is the fact that everything is 100% trackable when it comes to the solution so that we can see how consumers are actually opting in you know are they scanning a QR code to add the pass are they adding the pass to their mobile wallet how are they actually uh, participating with the pass are they using it for a loyalty card to constantly drive users back to, to that store location and and to complete an overall objective where it might you know similar to your traditional hole punch loyalty card where you have to come back five times to get a hole punch and then after that fifth hole punch you receive a reward we can integrate something like that that classic loyalty card right into passbook and it's even fraud proof and better yet we're allowing that traditional loyalty card to now have communication along with it with the push notifications with the geo fence for alerts based on proximity to that store location so it really is the best of both worlds every day there's new technologies coming into market um, and you know it's hard to embrace all of them. It's hard to know what to, what, is, what is always going to be the best fit for your demographic, you know, your target audience. And I think the most important for, for thing for brands to keep in mind is that it's always about the end user's experience. It has to be an experience that allows the target audience to do what they want, when they want, where they want. Okay, because if we utilize a, a new technology um, just to use it, just to say that our brand is innovative, but we don't utilize it correctly, well, what we're actually doing is, is hurting the innovative technology that we're associating our brands with because it's leaving a bad taste in, that, in the, in the uh, mouth of that target audience. And when we do that, it's less likely that that consumer audience comes back to participate again with us. So it always has to be about the end user experience.